Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fourth video in the STM32 Ethernet series using the Mongoose library. In the previous video, we saw how to create a simple weather station to log the temperature, pressure, and humidity data to the web interface. Today we will create another project involving the Mongoose library. We will see how to use the Mongoose wizard to update the firmware over the air. I am going to implement the DHCP in today's project, so we will be able to update the firmware using any device on the same network. Before we proceed with the project, let's quickly review the Mongoose library. Mongoose is a network library for C++. C++. It provides event-driven non-blocking APIs for TCP, UDP, HTTP, WebSocket, MQTT, and other protocols. It is designed for connecting devices and bringing them online. On the market since 2004, used by a vast number of open source and commercial products, it even runs on the International Space Station. Mongoose makes embedded network programming fast, robust, and easy. The Mongoose wizard simplifies the creation of professional interfaces without requiring design or front-end expertise. It supports user authentication with multiple access levels, which can be enabled effortlessly via a single checkbox. Additionally, dashboards are kept up to date with a built-in device connection indicator on the toolbar. UI controls such as drop-downs, toggles, and inputs can be easily mapped to see structures by adjusting getter and setter functions. Conditional display functionality allows data exceeding predefined thresholds to be highlighted using alternative styles. Moreover, Mongoose provides seamless firmware update support for microcontrollers like SDM32, ESP32, and others, requiring no additional configuration. All right, Let's start the Mongoose wizard to design the web UI. I already have my test project here, so I am creating a new project. Set the destination directory for the project. I am naming it project 1, as I will create one more project to test the OT update. I am using the same H745 discovery board, and the build environment is Cube IDE. We will start with the blank dashboard. Let's add a container first. Now add a panel inside the container. Remove all the unnecessary elements from this panel. Let's rename this panel firmware update. Add the same text here. Now delete this input field, and instead here we will insert the firmware update button. You can see that the API variable for this button is automatically assigned, and if you check the REST API section, here you can see the API endpoint is created for the OTA button. So we do not need to do anything, everything is set up by default. Now go to the sidebar section, and here I am naming the toolbar as Project 1, so that you can identify which project is running on the board. That is all, Let's generate the project now. Here you can see the project 1 folder contains all the files to this project. We will now load this project in the cube IDE. Click on import project, locate the project folder, and select finish to import it. The project has been successfully imported to the IDE. As I mentioned in the beginning, I will use the DHCP today, Therefore the static IP configuration is commented out here. We do not need to modify anything on this project, let's just build it to check for errors. The project builds fine without any errors. Note the output on the console here. By default the cube IDE does not generate the binary file, so we need to enable it in settings. Right click on the project, and open the properties. Go to CC++ build settings. Now go to post build outputs. Here check this box for generating binary file. Apply this configuration, and generate the project again. Here you can see the binary file has been generated. You can browse the file in the project folder, 
cm7 debug. Here is the binary file for this project. Go back to the cube IDE and flash the project to the board. We will see the logs in the serial console. You can see the device is sending the DHCP request, and here it finally got the IP. Let's copy this IP address, and paste it in the browser. The web UI has been loaded successfully. Let's try to update the firmware once. I will use the binary file generated for this project itself. You can see the update logs in the serial console. The update has been flashed, and now the board is rebooting. You can see the DHCP has assigned the same IP again. The web server is loading just fine with the same IP address. Let's delete this project from the IDE, as we will load a new project here. Let's rename the binary file, and copy it to the desktop. We will later load this project from another computer on this same network. Let's create a new project on the wizard. I am naming this project as Project 2. The rest of the things are the same as the previous project. I have selected a LED toggle dashboard template. The API variable is already created for this LED button, but I am changing the data field name to state. Let's update it in the elements page. This toggle button will control the LED connected to the board. I want to add one more control for the display backlight on the board. Let's duplicate this panel widget itself. This is going to be the backlight control panel, and we need to create another endpoint for it. Let's name this endpoint as backlight. The data field name is state, and it is going to be a boolean type variable. Update the API on the page elements. I want to change the text here based on the state of the toggle button. The data will be fetched from the backlight API variable. If the button is in the on state, we will display the text enabled, otherwise, we will display the text disabled. Right now the button state is false, hence the text disabled is being shown here. Let's change the state to true, and you can see the text enabled now. So this is working fine. We can also use the variable text along with some fixed text. Here the text will display on or off based on the state of the toggle button. There seems to be some error in the formatting. Let me give space here. Alright the error is gone, so let's quickly test this by modifying the data field value in the REST API. Now go to the sidebar section, and we will add a new page here. I am calling this page, Firmware Update. Let's modify the toolbar text, so that we can identify that Project 2 is running. We will again create a panel to upgrade the firmware on this page. Now we have two pages, one for controlling the LEDs, and second for updating the firmware. Let's generate this project now. Import the project in Cube IDE. We need to configure the LED and the backlight pins in the Cube MX, so open the Cube file first. Go to System Core, GPIO. The LED on board is connected to the pin PJ2 which is already configured as the output pin. We just need to assign this pin to the Cortex-M7 core, as this is a dual core board. I am changing the default output level to high, I will explain this in a while. The display backlight is connected to pin PK0, but this pin is configured in the input mode. Let's change its mode to output and assign this pin to the Cortex-M7 core. 
That is all the changes we need to make, click save to generate the project. Here is the schematic of the H745 discovery board. As you can see the LED is connected between the 3.3 volts and the pin on the MCU. The LED pin, which is basically the pin PJ2, is connected to the negative terminal of the LED. So if the pin PJ2 is set to low, the LED will turn on, and if the pin PJ2 is set to high, the LED will turn off. That is why I configured the default state of the pin as high, so the LED will be off by default. Let's continue with the project now. The REST API functions are generated in the Mongoose Glue source file. Let's copy the LED related functions in our main file, we will add the LED related code here itself. Doing this will prevent our modified code being overwritten when we regenerate the modified project from the Mongoose dashboard. We need to rename these functions first. Let's modify the getter function first. This function is called by the web UI whenever it wants to fetch the LED status. Here we will read the status of the pin PJ2. If the pin is high, that means the LED is turned off, and we will assign the value 0 to the button state. Otherwise assign the value 1 indicating that the LED is on. Similarly the LED setter function is called when we toggle the LED button on the UI. Here we will check the value of the LED state variable. If the value is 1, we will turn the LED on, by resetting the pin PJ2. Otherwise turn the LED off, by setting the same pin. Now modify the backlight related functions. The backlight pin can be controlled directly. If we want to turn the light on, we will set the pin PK0, and if we want to turn it off, we will reset the same pin. We have created the functions for the getter and setter parts for the UI, but by default the UI interfaces with the functions it generated for these purposes. In order to set our functions for getter and setter, we need to set the HTTP handlers. The name is the name of the API endpoint, and then we need to mention the getter and setter functions. Similarly we will set the HTTP handlers for the backlight functions. That is all, let's build the project now. The project builds fine without any errors. We also need to enable binary file generation for this project. So let's do it in the project properties. Build the project again, and now it will generate the bin file too. Let me rename it to project2.bin, and copy it to the desktop. Now we will do a proper test of firmware update by loading the project2 binary file. You can again see the logs on the serial console. The project has been flashed, and now the board is rebooting. The DHCP has assigned the same IP address to the board. You can see that the project 2 has been loaded to the board, and we see the UI for the same. Let's test the toggle buttons now. Check the LED on board, and how it reacts to the toggle button. The LED is responding fine, now let's see the display backlight. Also note the text changing with the state of the toggle button. So everything is working fine. Now we will flash the project1 binary file. The file has been flashed, and the board is rebooting now. You can see that project1 has been loaded to the board. Now we will flash these projects using some other computer, which is connected on the same network. I am copying these binary files to my Google Drive, so that I can load them from another computer. All right here I have another computer running Windows OS. Let me first copy the binary files from Google Drive to the computer. 
Now go to the IP address assigned by the DHCP. Project 1 is currently running on the board. I am loading the Project 2 binary file from this computer itself. You can see the logs on the serial terminal, which is fetched from another computer, as the board is connected to it. The project has been loaded, and the board is now rebooting. You can see that Project 2 is running on the board. We can as usual control the LED, and backlight on the board. Now let's load the Project 1 binary file. It has been loaded successfully, and the board is rebooting now. You can see that Project 1 has been loaded to the board. So we can load the binary files from any device connected on the same network. If you enable the port forwarding, you can even load the binary files from anywhere in the world. We saw how to use the OTA to update the firmware on the STM32 device using the Mongoose library. This is it for the video. You can download the projects from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.